so in the name. in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. May the Holy Cross be my light. Let not the dragon be my guide. Be gone, Satan. Do not tempt me with your vanities. What you are for me is evil. Drink your own poison. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, Michael. Um, so I believe, Ryan, were you planning on giving a little presentation about Slack tonight? Yes, that and some general stuff about events. All right, well, everyone, please give Ryan a big old SGA welcome and the floor is yours. How's everybody doing? I can't, whatever. Okay, um, so real quick tonight, I'm gonna present on, um, if I can get the screen share thing to come up. Um, I'm going to present on SGA events and programming as well as um, how we are going to be using Slack this year. Can everyone see this? Maybe? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So real quick, and this is a reused presentation. Um, so I am the director of special programs. And here's just what I've done over the last couple of years within SGA. Um, I was originally a special programs committee member 2017, 2018, and that's how I got involved. So what counts as SGA programming? And by the way, this I was supposed to give this during the retreat, but because of COVID, we kind of had to shrink it. So anything with SGA's name or logo on it counts as SGA programming, Tough Talks, Campus Clarity, our Meet Your Series, Table Hours, which unfortunately are not happening this year, um, any forums that we have, or any collaboration with another campus department or student organization. All of these are included as types of programming that um, my position, my committee are kind of responsible for. So why this position and why this process? So this committee and this whole process and why I'm here, it kind of ensures the facilitation of important conversations across campus, uh, financial stewardship. So we review purchases made for events, accountability in events. So we can't just you know give out path points willy nilly. Um, it helps to enhance and improve SJ's programming image across campus, making sure that our outreach aligns with our policies, including the commitment to community, primarianist charism and university policies. Um, I also serve as the representative for co-curricular interests and initiatives of the undergraduate student body. So all of that kind of gets tied together. So if anyone, and I always say this at every retreat that I've presented at, if whoever, everyone here should at some point consider doing an SJ event. I know a lot of you have in the past, but here's how to go about doing it. So your first step would be to plan it out, to consider who's leading this event, who's SGA working on, who are they working with? What's the goal? What does the event look like? Why is this taking place? Uh, make sure everyone involved is on board. Make sure everyone knows what's going on. Make sure um, people know what they're supposed to be speaking on, stuff like that. Where is it taking place? This year, it's most definitely going to be on Zoom. Um, and you have to fill out the SJ event request form. So it is a Google form this year. It has been linked on our Isidore site. I still have to work on getting that put in the right spot, but it'll be live after Senate. Um, your event will not be sponsored, publicized, or hosted by SGA until this is filled out and approved. And this is the official internal record of your event. Um, because my committee kind of works as oversight for our events and helping people to plan and uh, figure out what they want to do, I really need to see this. My committee needs to see this just to make sure that everything is going smoothly. So here's what the form looks like. I'm not going to pull it up. It's just a Google form. It's got a bunch of questions on it. Just general about like what's going on during your event, when's it happening, all that kind of stuff. So for the form, you basically just need to know specific details, date and time, location. Again, it's probably going to be on Zoom, event plan, what's going to be going on, uh, any purchases that might be necessary. This year, there probably shouldn't be a whole lot if it's going to be path eligible and any other pertinent information. So what's the point? Um, in general, we need to know this information so we know what's happening. We need to make sure that everything is done and complete and we aren't violating any policies. Um, especially for Bridget, it helps to make marketing material because you can't just drop it on her the day before and expect her to stay up until five o'clock in the morning on Canva 
putting something together. Um, and most importantly, it's an SGA event and we need to make sure this is up to our standards. We are known for having high quality programming and we would like to keep it that way. It's also to prevent last minute issues, changes and frustrations. I also always tell the story about um, me and one of my friends literally running across campus one day because we did not know that an event was happening in, like we were running late to an event that the person who put on the event told us, she never told us it was happening. So we had to literally run across campus. That was, let's not do that. So now what, after you plan your event, um, for you, really nothing happens. Um, Bridget and I usually use the information on your form and complete the event registration. I do the event registration stuff. So CSI, Aviate, um, any flyers that need printed, again, probably not happening this year, any risk management stuff, COVID related stuff, social media scheduling on Bridget's end and purchases being made. Um, this is why we need all the information at the beginning. It's to like make sure that there's not a whole lot of back and forth about what's going on. Um, it is really important because deadlines are super important, especially during COVID to make sure that everything is kept track of. So before your event, you need to make sure that all your registrations have been approved. Um, usually I'll let you know, um, sometimes I'll forget, but you just need to make sure that everything has been, everything's in order. Um, any rooms are booked, if at all, very rare this year, um, and any setups, any technology has been requested appropriately. Um, anyone you're involved with knows what's happening. You need to make sure that your events and materials are in place for PATH events because they do need to follow specific guidelines and all team members, including me, any chiefs of staff, anyone else have scanning access on 1850, which I'll go over at a later time when we do PATH events. So that is all. If you complete all these steps, your event should have no issues. That being said, um, so there's me and Bridget um, and our information. Um, please reach out to me or Bridget if you have any questions because I'm pretty sure we're both happy to help with anything that you might run into. Um, I think we're both night owls, so We are. Yeah, so. Anytime, just ask a question. We'll be happy to help with whatever. This isn't meant to be scary with all the rules. It's just how we find it works best. So any, just some real quick um, reminders. Aviate event registration has to be sub submitted at least two weeks before the event. They're being a little lenient on this right now just because everything's online, but we do need time. Um, if it's co-sponsored or another organization is um, helping us with it, they need to complete their own forms on their end. And if you need, if you want to have SJ's name on it, you need basically Bridget and I's go ahead or help with it. So does anyone have any questions, comments, or concerns about the events portion of this? And I can send these slides out. I know it's a lot and really clear. Also, can I add one more thing? Um, you guys are more than willing to make your own graphics. Like that's fine with me, but if you're not good with that stuff, like I can make them for you too. I don't mind. Thank you, Bridget. And I think everyone should try to at least do one SGA event this year because you, because if you're doing it over zoom, you don't have to go through the hassle of booking rooms and all that stuff. Like it's really easy. And again, we're happy to help. So I think everyone should do it, especially for advocacy projects. Surveying is important. Okay, so real quick, um, this is just super basic about Slack. Um, I've, we're trying to get people to use it more. Um, not seeing a whole lot of activity on it, but I, we would really like people to use it. It's, I think it's super awesome. I think Exec knows I think it's super awesome. Um, and it has been really helpful over the last couple of years getting us all on the same page and not having 300 different group me messages going. It's all in one place. Real quick, a fun fact is, did you know that Slack initially stood for the searchable log of all communication and knowledge? I didn't know this until like a week ago, but that's what it is. Because if you haven't found out already, you can literally search anything in our Slack group back to when we got Slack like two years ago. So any files, any messages, anything are completely searchable. So if you ever have like questions about what we were doing two years ago, you can probably find it. So why did we choose Slack? I know I get the question a lot, like, why aren't we just doing GroupMe? Why aren't we using you know, something else? Why aren't we just doing text? Um, it's because it's, used, it's 
very helpful to have the conversations broken into channels. Um, so that way you can be in multiple conversations without having to hop back and forth between, you know, if sustainability is using text and social programs is using GroupMe and something else is only doing over email. We're trying to get it all centralized in one place so that people can join or leave groups as needed and stuff like that. Um, it's easier to manage who's in what group. Um, we have had issues in the past with like having to make new group chats when people leave or people are too overwhelmed or stuff like that. Um, Add-ins are very beneficial. I think every week everyone should get a notification from our calendar about events. We haven't had a whole lot lately, but you should get a ping that usually it says there's nothing going on, but that's an example of an add-in that we use. Um, and it's very customizable. It's really easy. When you all joined, you should have gotten a welcome message. I think it usually comes from me just saying hi and like getting you to fill out profile stuff. It's, I think it's awesome to be able to set stuff up like that. And then just a quick overview of what this looks like. Um, so you've heard me talk about channels before, and that's what's on the left there in that box. Um, I'm in every channel at the moment, just because I've tried to spread them out a little bit. So your list will not look like this. And you can also star them to keep them like up at the top. Um, that box at the top, which I don't know where the label went, um, that's the search bar. If you click on that, it brings up a whole thing where you can select a bunch of options, like an advanced search to find files, find messages, find links, find whatever. It's super helpful. if. Like let's say you can't find the Zoom link for a certain meeting, type it in, find a link, super awesome. Um, and then over on the right there is where you can, uh, where my picture is, you can change your profile settings, you can put your name in there, you can put your picture. I highly encourage everyone to please set a picture and put some information in their profile. It's nice being able to see everyone's faces and know who everyone is and not have to jump into the roster through Google Drive every time. Um, and also set your pictures on 1850 if you haven't already. I saw Bridget nodding. Please do so. Please do. Our website looks great with people's faces on them, not so much with just the little person icons. Um, yeah, so then Slack is broken out basically just like a normal messaging tool. Um, it's kind of intimidating when you first join because um, there's kind of a lot going on, but it is super helpful. Um, especially going into the workforce, because I know a lot of companies, especially during COVID, are starting to use Slack. Um, I believe so former President Barodkin um, did an internship through Slack. I forget what his like title was, and they used, or he, they did an internship through Snapchat, and they used Slack, and he was super blown away. But a lot of companies are using Slack now for internal communications and stuff like that. So it is nice to have a tool to use and know what's going on. Um, if you have any questions about Slack, I'm always happy to answer them. Um, I'm usually on it quite a bit, just doing stuff. Um, and yeah, I would, we would like people to start using this more because it is a really awesome tool and really helpful. And yeah, anyone have any questions about this part? Non-SGA members, feel free to ask uh, questions about Slack as well if you, feel, if you want to. Seeing that we don't have any questions, Ryan, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Um, Michael, do you have any special request presentations tonight? I do not. You do not. Okay. All right, then Grant, would you like to take attendance? Absolutely. Uh, James Bro. Here. Jada Brown. Here. Jules Carr Chelman. Jules, uh, Natalie Coppolino, here. William Dickman, here. Jesse Edwards, Jesse, uh, Michael Fields, here. Sophia Garcia, here. Jessica Garvin, present. Mason Gordon, here. Daniel Hennessy. Present. Anna Hobie. Here. Uh, Andrew Hubert. Hubert. Uh, Jake Jagels. In attendance. Bridget Mooney. Here. Drew Moyer. Here. Ryan Pearson. Here. Annie Philbin. Here. Grace Perucci. Here. 
Uh, Kat Pistoni. In attendance. Tommy Reese. Here. Jack Santee. Here. Kelly Stewart. Here. Ben Thomas. Here. Jacob Troutwine. Trout one. I thought I saw him here. Here, sorry. Uh, Rachel. No, you're good. I thought I saw you here. Uh, Rachel Venon. Here. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, Grant. Are there any public announcements at this time? All right, seeing none, are there any public comments and concerns? Um, I know that Annie put the uh, link to that in the doc. So I'm just gonna check that and see if we have any. Refresh that. All right, I don't see any public comments and concerns. So I'll just ask again, are there any public comments and concerns for tonight? Okay, seeing none, um, would any SGA members like to give a report? Just go ahead and unmute yourself. I'll give one quickly. Um, so a few weeks ago, there's an academic Senate meeting. Um, Dr. Burnley spoke and gave a presentation about pretty much the same things we talked about at Senate when he was here. And there's also another presentation given by a number of people, one was from Campus Rec, from OLR, I think, uh, talking about the resources that are available to help both faculty and students um, as we deal with a lot of stresses and things. And so I'm just gonna list a few of the resources they mentioned and also post this in the Slack after this meeting. But there is telebehavioral counseling offered via the Counseling Center and uh, CADRE, which is the Center of Alcohol and Drug Resources. Um, there's this new Let's Talk service, which provides brief informal consultation uh, with a mental health provider designed to decrease stigma and manage short-term challenges. And the Brook Center is also, also has uh, this co-pilots program, which is a pure health coaching program around personal well-being goals and strategies to overcome obstacles. So these are just a few of the resources that are available to help um, us as students uh, especially as we get towards the end of the semester with exams and things like that. And so I would encourage you if you need them to, to, to use them because that's what they're there for. All right, thanks, James. Um, do any other SGA members have a report before I get into my report? Uh, I probably should have said this like two weeks ago when I went to the athletics advisory meeting, but I totally forgot that like I'm a thing with that. So anyway, I went to the athletics advisory meeting and um, it was really good just to hear that all the fall sports like have been able to get back in practicing and stuff. Obviously, they've been moved to the spring, but they're still practicing. And as far as basketball goes, I think our limit right now is 300 capacity in the basketball arena. So that's basically gonna be family members, the highest paying donors, probably no students. So that's kind of sad, but um, they will be obviously broadcasting every game and like having watch parties and stuff to try to keep the students involved. But other than that, that's about it. So there you go. <laughs> All right, thanks for that update, Kat. Do any other SGA members have a report they wanna give? I can go real quick. Um, mentioning about, or not mentioning. Um, so I just talked about events real quick and some stuff that we have coming up. Um, we have um, a couple things that I think Natalie's gonna talk about coming up soon. And then as far as anything you might hear from me, um, we usually do a series called SGA chats where we do one on one or like one on small group conversations with students to get like their feeling about what's going on with campus. Um, so look out for an email with how to sign up for that. Um, it is kind of voluntary, but we do want as many people as possible to get involved with that. So more information will be coming um, with that soon. And we're also going to start looking at some class level town halls. So getting for all representatives 
uh, for class level representatives, we're going to look at how we can get you in touch with your constituents. Um, probably not face to face, obviously, but over Zoom or something like that, um, so we can see what people are wanting. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Do any other SJ members have a report? Okay, seeing none, I'll jump into my report. So for the Campus Digest um, update that Grant has been working on, it should be finally, hopefully coming out this week. So keep your eyes open for some SGA content in the Campus Digest. I think it'll probably be sent to the student body on Wednesday of this week. Um, and then as Ryan was just mentioning, we do have a few events coming up right now that we're working on. So mo most recently coming up, we have the Tough Talk that we'll be giving. Hopefully that, well, not hopefully, that will be November 17th at 7 p.m. Um, this is just the first of many communications about that. There will be a lot more reminders for SGA members to attend that. We will be hosting it virtually. So um, yeah, we just wanted to make sure that as many people can attend as possible for that. And we didn't wanna to have to deal with um, any type of COVID restrictions. So we thought that virtual was the best way to go this time at least. Um, another event that we have coming up is um, Yes, Moyer, we're working to make that uh, path eligible. Um, and then another event that we had coming up was our town hall. We're currently um, focusing on the top talk right now, but we'll soon shift gears into the town hall. So we want that to be in November and we're hoping for November 10th at 7 p.m., which is just the week before the top talk. But again, this is just the first of many communications about that. So keep your eyes open in the Slack for more of those communications. Additionally, the convalescent plasma is still going on. This is actually the final week of it and it ends on November 5th. So if you have had COVID and recovered or your friends have had COVID and recovered and you can donate, please encourage your friends to do so. And if you yourself could, that would be great as well. And if you can't, then at least spread the graphic that Mooney has posted on our SGA page, um, just to kind of spread the word and get all those last appointment slots filled. I know that the Community Blood Center is very grateful for everything that we've done thus far. So I really wanna finish this up strong this week. Um, then moving on to um, some news surrounding our open positions, the head of community relations and the camp director of campus unity. So that application was technically supposed to close Thursday night, but we've decided to extend it to Tuesday at 11.59, just so that a few more people can apply if they wanted to. We know that this past week has been really busy for some people, so we just wanted to kind of give them this opportunity to apply if they didn't get to do so yet. Um, that being said, I have emailed everyone who has applied so far um, just about scheduling their interview and what time that will work best for them this week. Um, so I've, I've heard back from a few people already, and I'll probably schedule those tonight in a little bit. Um, but ideally, we would really like to have that decision made by Friday so that these people can attend Senate this coming Sunday. Um, but if you have friends that are interested in SGA, please feel free to encourage them to apply and also post the graphic that Mooney made on your story or on your other social medias so that as many people get the opportunity to apply for these positions as, as they can. Um, and then lastly, regarding our anti-racism action steps, one of my commitments is that as president, I was going to be creating a working group within the organization just to monitor and evaluate progress that's been made on these action steps and other action steps that um, arise as the year unfolds. So I would really like to have a group of about six or seven people who I will be reaching out to shortly about that. Um, we have one or two positions that are open currently. If, any, if anyone is very interested in this type of work, please feel free to Slack me or text me or email me and let me know and we can get you added to that working group. But that's all I have for you all. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, seeing none, Jagles, you can go ahead and kick off Senate floor. Uh, seeing that we have no legislation in the folder, uh, is there any objection to skipping Senate floor tonight? Seeing none, great job tonight at Senate floor, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, everyone.